of plastic, somewhat different, but not entirely different from what I hold here in my hand, may someday radically change how electricity is generated. Making uh, such arrays as you see behind me here obsolete, or at least if not obsolete, definitely and significantly altered. In a recent interview with 81-year-old Dr. Alvin Marx in his laboratory at Athol, I learned two things. One, uh, how to stay young at heart and sustain a life relatively full of gusto. And two, well, perhaps a little more pertinent to the theme of our interview, how at some time in the future, electricity may be economically generated from sunlight. Now, electricity can be generated from sunlight today, but it's very expensive. So if you will, Let's listen to Dr. Marx as he explains his method for the generation of electricity by sunlight and talks about the costs of generation. Perhaps more important to you and me, the cost to us as consumers. I'll be over there for three weeks. I'll be giving lectures on my technology to their scientists uh, and to uh, their top uh, administrators with a view to starting a project in, in China. Uh, now, this is a an project designed primarily in the layman's... Of, uh, to convert sunlight into electric power cheaply and efficiently. Mm -hmm. So cheaply and so efficiently that all the other technologies will become obsolete. In other words, those uh, photovoltaic cells, we can throw them all out? Essentially, yes, in due course. What this will be essentially is a continuous film very much like uh, a roll of plastic, and the material will has electrodes in it uh, to collect uh, the electric power. Will be, you can lay it out flat, take the, let the sunlight strike it, and take off the electric power. Sounds wonderful to me. Incidentally, I should say right now that we're talking to Mr. Alvin Marks, who is uh, an inventor uh, living right here in Athol, Massachusetts, and who, in his own name, uh, holds 120 plus uh, 120 pounds in the U.S. Uh, and others abroad. And others abroad. Well, I'm I'm certainly impressed. And over your career, which I think it's safe to say has spanned probably a good number of years. Well, about a half a century. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And you're special. You've tended to specialize, however, haven't you? In optics and electronics, yeah. uh, primarily, and in uh, the chemistry of polymers, particularly as it regards polarizing materials. Well, when you speak of polarizing materials, and I, I, I somehow or other think of those old 3D movies when I used well, to wear the correct. glasses. Those, that's, that, that was used for that purpose. It's also used in camera filters, non glare visors for, for automobiles. Um, uh, it's used in uh, the uh, uh, eyeglasses for uh, when, you, when you go fishing, to, to see under the water, see the fish. And how does one thing lead to another? For example, how does one thing lead uh, from uh, 3D movies to uh, energy conservation and uh, inexpensive energy development? Well, I've always been interested in energy. And many years ago, I was working on other, other technologies in the field of energy. I was in, on President Kennedy's power panel. Uh, I had many, many contracts from the Department of the Navy, the Department of Energy, National Science Foundation and uh, other top government uh, agencies interested in power. But it was only in about, about 10 years ago that through my daughter, Bridget, who went to Smith College and who was uh, interning at the United Nations over a summer, that I met some people from other countries. One of them was the, uh, uh, Dr. Ashrat Osmani, who was the head of the International Atomic Energy Commission and who uh, started the Pakistani nuclear industry. At that time, he was working for the United Nations. And we had dinner one evening, and he was very, very upset. And I said, uh, Ashrat, what's the problem? So he said, uh, Alvin, he says, I understand you're an inventor. He said, do you know what happened? My favorite project in Africa has been canceled by the UN. I said, what is it? He said, it's a photovoltaic project. It was set up in a little village, a little tribe in the middle of Africa. It was supplying them with power for lights, uh, they had a radio going, they, had, they were pumping water, they had a refrigerator, and they were on their way to becoming, uh, joining the 20th century. So uh, I said, what happened? He said, the UN canceled the project. I said, why? He said, it's too expensive and too inefficient. 
And so he turned to me again. He says, Alvin, you're an inventor, aren't you? He said, yes. He says, why can't you work on a more efficient and cheaper solar power system? And I said, I'll, I'll give it some thought. So a couple of months later, I put all my ideas together, and I had the approach to this. And it, it differs from the ordinary photovoltaic cell uh, in that it is a uh, billions of tiny antennae, similar to what you have on the roof, only very, very small and incorporated in a plastic film. And of course, we have to have electrodes, and it's not quite as simple as what I'm telling you, but, but basically that, that's the principle of it. It uses micro antennae instead of uh, semiconductor materials. And it's very efficient and very cheap. Sounds to me like then, that in a sense, you're amplifying uh, the energy that... No, but you can't amplify. You can't get more than you put in. Well, I... But, I but, but you can take in what's more efficiently. The present cells only produce about 8% of the sunlight energy, and this will produce closer to 80%. Well, that's quite a jump. I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Have you been working on, on this particular end of it, then, for how long? And did that start right here in it's, Athol, or have you no, been thinking about well, it for it years? No, well, it started... I was living in Athol at the time, but I was visiting in New York when I met Dr. Osmani for dinner, and uh, he impressed upon me the, the need for doing that. At that time, I'd, I had been previously in 3D movies, and 3D movies had gone downhill, and when Reagan came in, there was no more uh, power, uh, power projects from inordinate energy, so uh, I needed to find something else. And this, this is what happened. I see. Well, it sounds like uh, you're not only doing something that definitely is very worthwhile, but it sounds to me like you're having a lot of fun doing oh, it, I'm too. I'm enjoying it immensely <laughs> because I meet so many wonderful people, and they're also excited about what I'm doing, and they're also helpful. Uh, they, uh, we start off with a few friends and, and stockholders of the family, and we formed a, for a public company eventually, and we've been really inundated with support from lot, mostly small people. The, the government has been slower to come around, we, although I understand they now have a proposal that they ask us to submit, and uh, we did. But in the meantime, we had the, got the electric power industry interested, and we got some support from them. Uh -huh. I see. Okay. You're not going into competition with them then? No, no. We're going to be working with them, basically. Um. Essentially, they're, they're really badly hurt by the present situation. People are scared to pieces of uh, about uh, nuclear power. They're afraid the plants are going to blow up. They're very old. Mm -hmm. And that would could ruin a whole beautiful country that we have around here. It certainly could. And the, the other thing is that uh, if anyone wants to build a coal-fired plant, uh, then they have similar problems. It belches a lot of pollution and smoke and mess, and people don't want it. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're desperately looking for a change. But so far, they, they've had nothing that could compete with the with the uh, with the existing technology, and so they need new technology. Mm -hmm. My only point here is that sure they they want it and they're willing to support it timidly, uh, because I think don't think the government wants it to happen too quickly. Uh, they're afraid it'll upset the whole coal and oil industry and all the rest of it, which is a tremendously big in industry. Mm -hmm. But the power industry really wants it, and uh, we're getting some support, and I'm expecting the support to grow. Good. I'm sure it will grow. The one other question that I wanted to uh, get to, uh, often I think when uh, lay people like myself, and we think of inventors, and we think them squirreled away someplace working all alone, but you're not, uh, you, uh, you've got quite a crew here working with well, you, Well, I'm going to have even more. Uh, the the uh, electric, U electric Power Research Institute, which is an arm of the, of the utility industry, is, is granting another contract to Lowell University, $100,000. It's not much, but it's a, it'll, it'll, it'll double our effort. And uh, then, in addition to that, we're, we, we've been promised funds from other sources as well. Eventually, I see this as a, as a huge project involving trillions of dollars and, and half the population, of working population of the country and in, in the world. Okay. Uh, everybody in Athol is everybody. sure of a job. Huh? Well, we've got to get this going. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. And it sounds, and that, as I said... That means me. a big investment, because it, you cannot produce anything without investing in it. I don't think anybody would argue with you on that And uh, right. my, my enthusiasm for this thing, I think, has brought it up to this point, and I think it'll, it'll, it'll grow because it's like, a, it's like a snowball going downhill. The more people get involved, the more, even more people get involved. And One and other question. Have you, have you placed this in a time frame of any sort? Do you look, uh, look yeah, forward I, to it? Yeah, it's mostly a dollar time frame. Volumaloid, mm -hmm. about $5 million to bring it to, to uh, fruition. And we've already spent a few million on the thing, but we need more to keep, 
bring it over the hill, over the hill, so to speak, over the hump. Uh, and uh, for the the permanent type, which I didn't speak speak to you about before, it was called Lepcon, uh, which requires a much bigger facility and more research and development. That's a hundred million, but we may be able to pay for that out of the profits from from Lumaloid. From first from the first step, uh, yeah. pay for the second. But, step. but I don't. It may not work that way because what might happen is that. People get so excited about this, say, we've got to have it now, and they put more money, in, money into it. And what I hope will happen is that the government will become tremendously interested in this and start giving us big contracts, which is really the way to go. Well, one question that everybody's going to ask is uh, about the cost. Are we saving any money here, oh, Dr. Mark? Oh, tremendously. Uh, to give you an idea, the cost of photovoltaic cells today is about uh, three, to three to five or six dollars a watt. Nuclear power costs four dollars a watt, four to five dollars a watt. Uh, coal power, coal oil power, about dollar to dollar and a half a watt. But Lumaloid will cost only one to two cents a watt, which will make it so cheap that everybody can afford it, the investment being so little. And then the cost, the, the cost per kilowatt, on the other hand, is, shapes up a little differently. Uh, the cost per kilowatt, uh, in, the, in the case of Lumaloid, will be about one or two cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, compared to the average man person's home today, anywhere between 10 and 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Wow, that's where can I get in line? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Alvin Marks. It's been a pleasure, and uh, and your your enthusiasm for it is uh, generated to me, and I hope it is generated to other people well, out there. Well, I hope so, and I uh, look forward to your presentation. Thank you, sir.